Okay, Pro Airsoft are back with another review. And yes, I'm doing this review on the same exact day as uh, the uh, Smith & Wesson. Uh, I finally got time to do some reviews, and I haven't done this one. I think this is the last gun that I have to do so far. So, But this is a review of the KSP-90, um, or the CAR-P-90, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll show you what it comes with. I don't have the box because someone stepped on the styrofoam and busted a hole in it. Not saying any names, cameraman, but it comes with a trickle charger. It's a 9.6 volt, 250 milliamp trickle charger. So if you want to figure out how long you want to charge it, the battery it comes with is a 9.6, 1200 milliamp. So just divide 250 by 1200. It's like four hours or so. But that's actually a pretty good battery. Um, it'll come with a speed loader and you'll be needing that, so don't just throw your speed loader. A cleaning, de-jamming rod. Probably won't use it, but I do sometimes. And then I bought a spare mag uh, separately. It cost me about $15 extra, but yours won't come with two magazines. Both of these are 78 round, no, 68 round mid caps. But the gun itself is right here. Um... Uh, yeah, let's get on that on plastic parts, I guess. Uh, it will come with an orange flash hider, which is just a piece of PVC pipe. And it'll be glued on there, but I took mine off. Because I'm going to be getting a barrel extension sometime soon. I've been trying to get one for quite a while, but I haven't. But the threads are metal, and the ring is metal. Uh, the bar right here on the charging handle, it's metal, but the handle is plastic. Um, the top rail is metal. And it is just standard 20 millimeter rail. And both side rails are metal, as long as with the whole upper receiver. And um, go to the plastic parts. Uh, the whole lower receiver is plastic. Selector switch is plastic. Trigger is plastic. Like I said, the charging handle, the actual handle is plastic. And the butt cover is plastic with this rubber paint on it. And. Uh, also, the magazine is plastic. Um, it's a pretty nice gun, but this is a pet peeve of mine. People hold the P90. The way you hold it is you just put your thumb in, you grip it through the hole. That's the easy part. But some people just grab it on the bottom like that, which isn't the most comfortable. You're supposed to stick your thumb through there and grip it like that, which makes it a lot more comfortable for CQB. You can move a lot faster. Um, I got the gun off evic.com for $120, uh, plus about $14 or so dollars shipping. Um, it's shooting too hot for CQB. It's shooting about 380 FPS. So you'll have to get the spring downgraded, maybe like an M100 or an M110. Probably an M100 spring. Um, I'd get this instead of the Echo 1, unless you're really picky about trademarks and realism. Because the Echo 1 is like $165. And all they do is just throw in a spare mag and put trademarks on it. Um, the only trademarks this has is it has a unique serial number right there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's about it. And it says made in China over on the other side. Probably can't see it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and it shoots about, with this 9.6, it shoots about 900 rounds a minute, probably. So. Put it in. You just take that out. Your fuse, you, when you get it, your fuse will be all pulled out and shoved down in there. Just shove it down in that hole down in there. Or else you won't be able to fit the battery in. Because it's a tight fit, as you can see. So it take a lot of cramming. But, and then you just fold the wires down in there. Push your buttstock back up. And it won't exactly click, but it's on there. And then, where's your selector switch? This is semi-auto. And then full auto. So, and the battery is fully charged, so that'll be the rate of fire when you fully charge your battery. I'll take the battery out, though, for the rest of the video. Um, I'll show you... In this video, I'll show you the disassembly, just the field stripping. Uh, I will make a separate video of the complete disassembly of how to get the gearbox out. 
I'm not going to do disassembly of the barrel and all that because it's just a hassle to get all the springs back in. But I can show you just quickly. If you want to do a barrel swap, you just push in the hop up until it pops out like that and just pull it all the way out. But there's a lot of springs in there that shoot out when I do that, so I'm not going to do it. Um, that's how you do the field stripping. This is just the body. Do your barrel swaps like that. Then put it back in. Just do it very carefully. And sometimes the hop up likes to turn sideways. I've had a lot of problems with that, but other than that, it's pretty easy. Like right now, I'm having some problems. The hop up does get kind of loose for some reason. There. I think I got it. Oh, I forgot. Epic fail. Took the battery out. Anyway, put in the magazine. You just slide it in. And just give it a little slap. Take it out. You pull. There's two. Don't just pull back one tab. There's two tabs. You got to pull them back at the same time and lift it up. But, uh, and by the way, these are 14 millimeter counterclockwise threads. Um, so. And I think that's about it on the video. Um, except, um, a pro actually, problems of how with the gun are sometimes on semi-auto after over time the selector plate um, it kind of they'll start to go bad. It's really hard to shoot semi-auto. You have to push in really hard. Um, but full auto is fine. Use full auto. It's really sensitive on full auto. But on semi auto, you have to really pull the trigger back. But I mean, if you're using a CQB, I don't see you ever using semi auto anytime either. So, or I wouldn't. And also another re oh oh the hop up. How do you get to the hop up? There's a little trap door underneath the uh, thumb grip. Right underneath here, you can probably see just a little bit of the hop in there. And for no hop. You want to turn it counterclockwise, and for hop, you want to turn it clockwise. So, and there are sling mounts on the gun right here, but you have to get a P90 sling mount, um, like a sling adapter, which costs like 40 bucks. So I just wouldn't even get a sling. It's not that heavy; probably weighs about seven, six, seven pounds, which isn't that bad. And also, into realism, they did put where the ejection port would be on the real P90. But obviously, it's just a piece of plastic on this, so it doesn't do nothing. It's just a piece of plastic that looks like an injection port. So don't think your gun like broke or something because it's just where the injection port would be. And also with these magazines, they just came out with like a mag brand uh, P90 mags. I suggest getting those because they're like 100 and some round mid caps. When these are like set 68 rounds, and the fake bullets. They tend to get loose and rattle around in there, which might get you out in the game. So, I wouldn't recommend using those. Um, and KS done a good job rebranding, doing the seams inside the uh, thumb holes. They don't hurt your fingers at all. They're well sanded down. And now I think that's about everything. And you probably noticed this is the tri-rail version, not the integrated red dot. So... I think that concludes this review. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And uh, thank you for watching, and be looking out for more reviews.